The other day, I saw this image shared on Twitter, not for the first time, about Marcus Rashford. It reads, Marcus Rashford paid himself £4,978 from MUCS Enterprise Limited in 2018, but gave himself an unsecured interest-free advance of £395,808. Director's loan rather than taking a taxable salary or dividend. Remember that when he calls for taxpayers' money to be spent. Now, the woman who tweeted that has more union flags in her bio than the crowd outside of a royal wedding, and her timeline is full of COVID conspiracies, shouting at supermarkets, and strange memes about teachers being stabbed. However, as I said, she is not the first person I've seen share it, and it's quite possible that some people who aren't total crackpots could read it and start to think that Marcus Rashford is somehow a shady character. For the record, he isn't, but this isn't a video about Marcus Rashford. I've made a couple of those in the past. Today's video is specifically about footballers and tax, since I don't think a lot of people understand how footballers are taxed and where there is a vacuum of knowledge, misinformation, like the tweet above, can thrive. There is so much wrong with that tweet that I can make videos about it, and it alone, from about seven different angles. For starters, an advance suggests payment for work that is yet to be done, and the assessment makes it seem as though a director's loan is a way for a company director to pay themselves without paying tax. Hint, it isn't, otherwise that's how all directors would pay themselves. A director's loan isn't an advance, but a loan, as its name suggests, and like all loans, it has to be paid back. What's more, any director's loan in excess of £10,000 are automatically treated as a benefit in kind, meaning that it has to be declared on your self-assessment tax return, you have to pay interest on the loan at the official rate, and you have to pay 13.8% national insurance on the full value of the loan. For the record, I had a quick scan through Marcus Rashford's accounts, and I couldn't actually see this director's loan, so it's possible that it is entirely fictitious. But even if he did take out a £395,808 director's loan, that is not a tax loophole. Oh, and I hate to break it to whoever invented that financially illiterate nonsense in an attempt to besmirch the great name of Sir Marcus of Rashford, but £395,808 is not a great deal of money in relation to Marcus Rashford's annual salary. Even after tax, Rashford most likely earns more than that in about a month. So if he were cooking the books, one suspects he would be playing with much larger numbers. Except for the fact, obviously, that he isn't. Anyhow, as I said, this isn't about Rashford or a handful of idiotic tweets, but about confusion more broadly about how footballers get paid. So I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible. There are essentially two ways in which footballers are paid. The first is through a regular salary for their employment as a footballer at a football club, in which their wages are paid through HMRC's PAYE which just means pay as you earn, like all other full-time UK employees. For those of you who either haven't been in full-time employment yet, or just have never been on a PAY contract for one reason or another, the way it works is relatively simple. Your employer pays your salary, and before you get paid your salary, HMRC takes out all of your PAY tax, national insurance, pension contributions, and all the rest of it. So say you earn £24,000 a year, which is £2,000 a month, you will never be given £2,000 in a month. You'll be given something like £1,650, but you have no more contributions to make yourself. All of your income tax has already been paid. Got it? Now, whilst my example earner on £24,000 a year pays around £350 a month in tax, most footballers, or at least the ones that we are interested in, earn quite a bit more than that. The average Premier League player is now reported to earn around £3 million a year, or £250,000 a month, the vast majority of which is taxed at the highest rate of income tax, which currently stands at 45% in the United Kingdom. That means that of your £250,000 a month salary, your take-home pay will be somewhere in the region of £133,000, with the other £117,000 having been deducted from your paycheck. That salary would put you well within the top 0.1% of earners in the UK, which is why footballers are among some of the country's top taxpayers. Just to be absolutely clear, this is how all professional footballers in this country are paid for actually playing football. There certainly seems to be this idea that some footballers don't pay 45% additional rate tax. That isn't true. They all do, unless they earn less than £150,000 a year. But it isn't the only way professional footballers are paid. Footballers, certainly at Premier League level, and to a lesser extent in the leagues below the Premier League, also have image rights deals. 
image rights deals involve payments to players for their commercial activities, so basically, any way in which a club can monetize a player outside of their contributions on the pitch. For the most marketable players, such as Paul Pogba, Mohamed Salah, and Christian Pulisic, their image rights are worth a small fortune, and in rare cases, they can actually exceed a player's earned income. These are special cases reserved only for some of the best-known faces in world football, though. For the vast majority of players, their image rights deals will very much be a secondary source of income, often going untouched and being considered as healthy savings ready for retirement. Crucially though, whether big or small, image rights deals are not paid via PAYE. Players, along with their agents, advisors and or accountants, set up companies, sometimes referred to as image rights companies, and the club will pay the player directly into these companies. As such, those payments will only be taxed a 19% corporation tax, rather than 45% additional rate income tax. Of course, the money has gone into a company, not directly into the player's pocket, and if they wish to extract that cash, they would either have to pay themselves a salary via the company or issue a dividend. If you are an additional rate taxpayer in the United Kingdom, your dividend is currently taxed at 38.1%. Image rights deals are also advantageous from a club's perspective in terms of their tax liability, since clubs have to pay 13.8% national insurance on a player's standard wage, but avoid that when paying directly into a company's accounts for image rights. You might be wondering why players and clubs don't just agree to £24,000 a year salaries with multi-million pound image rights deals, and that's because HMRC keep track of their every move like a hawk. Whenever you hear about a tax scandal involving a footballer, it will invariably be as a result of their image rights deals. This has been particularly prominent in Spain in recent years, where you do well to find a high-profile player who hasn't been dragged into some kind of tax row, including both Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo. In England too, there have been some notable, albeit rather less high-profile cases, and they are rising. During the 2019-20 season, the tax affairs of 246 footballers were investigated by HMRC, these investigations centre around whether a club has inflated a player's commercial value to them, and with it, the value of their image rights, whilst reducing their PAYE salary, in order to reduce the tax liability of both player and club. That's a steep rise from just 87 cases having been investigated during the 2018-19 campaign, although it's worth noting that 246 professional footballers is still a rather small number in the entire United Kingdom. And whilst there were 246 investigations last season, I don't believe any resulted in charges being brought, or not yet at least. Oftentimes in these cases in England, unlike in Spain, it isn't the Messis and Ronaldos of this world who are implicated, but middling championship players or third choice goalkeepers. Basically, HMRC will think a player's image rights are worth nothing or next to nothing, and if a club is paying them a bit more than nothing in an image rights deal, they start to get suspicious. Consequently, all clubs have to be able to show, as best as they can, why each player is worth the amount of money that they are paid in image rights to them. So, say Joel Matip at Liverpool was being paid £1 million a year into an image rights company in a deal agreed to by the club. If HMRC came along and said, we don't think Joel Matip is worth £75 in image rights, never mind £1 million. Liverpool might be able to point to him appearing in an advert for Nivea Men's new face moisturiser alongside Andy Robertson and Jordan Henderson, showing how valuable that ad campaign was to the club and how Matip therefore justifies his image rights deal. All of those numbers and scenarios are entirely invented by me as an example, just to be absolutely clear. Now, there is one last way in which footballers can make money, and that is by doing something outside of football just like anyone else. Say, for example, that Adama Traore founded his own pharmaceutical company and had beaten Pfizer, Moderna and AstraZeneca to the creation of a safe, inexpensive and highly effective COVID-19 vaccine that passed all clinical trials he would most likely get very rich. Except, I suspect that he would just gift it to the world since he seems like such a nice bloke. Of course, footballers tend not to found pharmaceutical giants or healthcare conglomerates, typically investing in property, shares, and more traditional investment vehicles. It shouldn't really need stating, but in these instances, footballers are taxed like any other member of the public and their business ventures will typically be structured in the most advantageous way possible by an accountant. So in conclusion, the idea that footballers don't pay any tax, or dodge enormous amounts of tax, in this country at least, is one asserted with very little evidence. 
In fact, on the contrary, the fact that a player's primary source of income, their salary for playing football, has to be paid via PAYE means that they pay an enormous amount of tax in terms of comparatively high earners. If we return to Marcus Rashford and used figures frequently touted about in the press for him, he is said to earn between £180 and £250,000 a week in terms of his salary and a further £2.2 million a year through his image rights deal. Split it down the middle and say £215,000 a week, which is just under £11.2 million a year, that would leave you with a take-home pay of around £5.9 million a year, having paid over £5 million in tax on your earned income. Then of that £2.2 .2 million, £418,000 goes to HMRC and corporation tax, meaning the elite of the elite in the Premier League are likely to pay between 5 to £10 million tax every year, typically equivalent to between 35 to 45% of their overall income. I won't tell you how that compares to some of the people who sit in our Parliament, or the House of Lords, or even some of our wealthiest business men and women, since I don't want to be accused of making this video political in any sense. But needless to say, not many people in the top 0.1% pay anything like that high a percentage of tax. I'm aware that this type of video is enough to send some people to sleep or bore them to death, although I suspect those people dialed out a long time ago. So for those of you who are still watching, I hope you found some value in it. Increasingly, I like to make videos on subjects that aren't covered, to the best of my knowledge at least, anywhere else, and also about subjects where I see common misconceptions spring up online. If you have any other suggestions along those lines, feel free to leave them down below in the comment section and like those suggestions by other subscribers that you'd like to see so that I know which ideas are most popular. For now at least, that's all from me, but thank you all as ever for watching, hit the like button if you enjoyed today's video, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications for the channel, and you can also find me on Twitter or Instagram, should you feel so inclined, where the username is simply at HITC7s on both.